Hi, this is Stuart again, and today we're going to continue our series on Pivotal Cloud Foundry by talking about how to get data from user-provided services in .NET Core. Here is the GitHub uh, repository that's got the demos that we're going to show today. You can uh, pull these and play with it yourselves, and I'll also post a URL at the end of the video. The project organization is fairly straightforward. There's a solution, and that solution loads up five projects, four .NET Core projects, and a Sandcastle help file builder, which produces documentation for your, for your API that looks very much like the traditional MSDN documentation. So if you are a API designer and you're offering an API to the world, it's really nice to offer MSDN style documentation. In this case, I did it in the form of CHM file, but you could generate uh, web pages or uh, markdown or whatever. And it is uh, tremendous. Uh, the Sandcastle help file builder has been taken over by the community, and I can't recommend it enough for documenting APIs. The core of the project is this uh, class, the UPS environment parser, and it re reads the environment variable VCAP services and parses out the user provided services. And it has a bunch of methods that allow you to get values from them as part of the contract. And we'll show you some of those methods in a minute. We have a X unit test. Again, if you're an API designer or developer, it's uh, considered good form to uh, write unit tests that exercise the majority of your functionality. Here I'm using the amazing X unit, which I love very much. And I've gone through the trouble of adding some traits to it, which in bigger projects can be used to dice slice and julienne what tests run. And I exercise in the unit tests the main functionality of the parser and uh, between all the different tests, we have nearly 100% code coverage. Again, that's a good thing to strive for if you can. And lastly, it's good form to provide a couple of using the code in the real world. Although unit tests are great and can show people how to use your classes, nothing is better, especially for Cloud Foundry, than to produce some little sample apps. So in that spirit, we've produced a console app that you can deploy to Cloud Foundry and a web API app that you can deploy to Cloud Foundry. And both the console and the web API basically only do one thing. They call the parser library and expose the values. The console to standard output, so you can look at it with the logs. And the web API, we have gone and done the right thing, which is to say that we have added Swagger so that we get nice documentation of our APIs. And we've done that through the really great Swashbuckle library. And this is what it looks like uh, when you run it. And so I've exposed some of the methods on the UPS parser as part of the demonstration, just to show you how you'd use it in a web app. And you can see that it returns the list of, one of the methods returns the list of services. And we can use that to go and get a, a value from that service. So we'll go ahead and get rid of the quotes here. And I happen to know there's a key called name. And if I execute that, you can see that it yielded the fact that that value is returned. I can also use uh, the method that existentially tries to figure out if a provided service, a particular key exists. Uh, this is nice in the sense that you should, if you're an API designer and your API deals with data, you should always provide a way of existentially um, figuring out whether or not a call would succeed before you actually try calling it. So the file IO libraries have directory and file existence. 
Uh, database things allow you to quickly find out if a record exists in the database. NoSQL things allow you to find out if given a particular set of keys, there's a structure, so does Redis. As an API designer, having existential tests are a good thing. And you can see, in fact, that the answer to this is true. And if I supply something completely random and execute this, that in fact, the response is false. And lastly, I was struggling with the fact of the problem with user provided services is in order to be able to develop code that uses a user provided service to get configuration data for my apps, I either need to run a local uh, instance of Cloud Foundry, which is not always the most fun thing to debug against, or I need an alternate mechanism for getting values from my user provided services. And in fact, that's what this library does. The test is local. If it returns true, it means that I've actually pulled the values off the file system instead of pulling them out of the environment variable for the EPS. So you might ask, how does that mechanism works? Well, fairly straightforwardly, when you new up a new instance of the parser, you pass in a folder location. And in that folder location, you have pieces of JSON that rep each representing one service. And so the service name is the file name without the extension. The contents are what will become the credentials part of a UPS. If you're not familiar with that, here's what it looks like. So here is what the JSON from the environment variable that Cloud Foundry makes called VCAP services. This is the actual JSON you'd get. And down in this JSON, you'd see a user provided section. And this represents one user provided service. So for us, what we care about is the name property. And then, of course, the credentials collection, which is a set of name value pairs. And as we'll show you when we create the services, if you have, if you maintain your service values, your configuration values in JSON files separated by environments, then you can manage that external configuration state, which is an important part of being a 12 factor app. Good apps have externalized configuration. So when we go to create the user provided services in Cloud Foundry, I'll show you how that works. Let's do some Cloud Foundry deployment. First, we'll CD into the UPS directory. And in here, you can see that we have our two JSON files and we have a little script that will turn those chunks of JSON into the eponymous user provided services, e.g. E VCAP Demo Service 01 and VCAP Demo Service 02. And you can see the syntax for that is pretty simple. It's CF cups, your service name, and then dash P and the uh, path to your JSON file. And it will cheerfully uh, produce those. And if we say CF services, you can see that we now have two user provided services. The next step is obviously to deploy the apps. So let's deploy the console app first. To make this easier, I have made a little command shell script that does the right thing. What it does is it does a .NET publish and specifies Ubuntu as the target because we're gonna be pushing to a Linux cell using the .NET Core build pack. And we'll show you the manifest for this while this is running. Three important things about pushing this app or indeed any app to Cloud Foundry. The first is always make a manifest file. I know Cloud Foundry CF push will go out of its way to figure out everything it needs to know, including the stack, the build pack, all that good stuff. But you'll find that your CF pushes are much more reliable and a lot faster if you give it some core information. Obviously, we have to give it a unique name. It's good to allocate some memory, uh, usually for .NET apps. Uh, as long as they're not too memory intensive, uh, you can get away with half a gig or even a quarter of a gig. We say explicitly we're targeting the Cloud Foundry Linux S2, which is compatible with compiling .NET Core for an Ubuntu target. 
And of course, as part of the publish, the bits we want to push to Cloud Foundry will end up in bin, debugger release, depending on what you specify, .NET Core, Ubuntu, publish. We also are going to say that we want to do the service binding when we push. And so these are the two services we just made. And one more happy note for console apps, if we tell it that there is no route, um, that is a shorthand for letting it know that this is definitely going to be a console app when it pushes. The other thing is, is that for testing purposes, we have a UPS folder in the console app, but we really don't want the bits in Cloud Foundry reading those files and getting confused. We want them to use the bound services. And so in CF Ignore, which is Cloud Foundry Ignore, works just like a Git Ignore with the same syntax. We say, don't push the UPS folder to Cloud Foundry. So if I push this to Cloud Foundry and I go and I run the code, or in the case of the website, I go and I exercise my thing through Swagger and there aren't any easier to find services, it means we forgot to bind them. By the way, all the more reason to do your service bindings and your manifest YAML. And of course, our push it command does the publish and push all in one step and is very handy. Let's see how we're doing. Yep, looks like we pushed it to Cloud Foundry. So let's do this. CF logs dash dash recent. And let's take a look at the output. And you can see that, in fact, it started up and uh, produced to standard out because I used console write line, basically a recapitulation of one of the unit tests that demonstrates that in fact, that is locals false. So it really is bound to the UPS and that the various bits and pieces are done. Uh, this console app doesn't have ongoing work to do. We just execute the steps in the unit test and then we do an infinite loop so it doesn't crash. And so at the end of it, uh, it's telling us that since we're done with the executing the work of this console app, we should stop it. This is a great way, by the way, of running one-off tasks in Cloud Foundry. Let's go to build and deploy the web app as well. Same exact process. This takes a long time. So we're just going to go through a time warp. Okay, our deployment is done. Let's go grab the URL for this supplied by Cloud Foundry and take a look at it running up in the world. And we'll do the same thing. First, we'll get the list of UPSs and you can see that we got our good friends VCAP demo service 01 and 02. We'll try and get a value. So we'll supply the service name. And, and again, we know there's a name property and we'll see that our web API returned the right value. We'll demonstrate that the existential test still works. And of course it returns true. And if we supply some key not there, it will return false. And then lastly, we're going to invoke the is local and what we're hoping is that it's false. And lo and behold, it is, which means that our library got the configuration from the user provided services via the VCAP services variable that was created by Cloud Foundry when our services were bound and run through the build. Path. .NET Core friendly way of working with user provided services whether you're working, working locally in your Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code, or working with the real values of the user-provided services that you've externalized up in Cloud Foundry.